Okay, folks, you got to watch this one. The lieutenant that was arrested for DUI had to spend three, time, three days in jail. And uh, this is how he spent his time in jail in Scottsdale. This is funny, funny, funny. And it goes on all the time here. All the time. It's disgusting. Check out this one. Just said there are two criminal justice systems in the United States. One for the wealthy, the other for everybody else. But affluence has nothing to do with the story that we're about to show you. Being a cop does. Tonight, a 12 News investigation uncovers the truth about Rick Van Galder's stint in jail after he was convicted of super extreme DUI. Investigative reporter Wendy Halloran is here with her exclusive investigation, making a mockery of the system. My investigation last month uncovered how Mesa Police Lieutenant Rick Van Galder tried relentlessly to get out of his DUI arrest. He failed. He resigned from the Mesa Police Department before he could be fired, and he was sentenced to three days in jail. As far as anyone knew, he served his time. That is, until we uncovered the truth, and it could cost some top jail officials their jobs. It's the old adage, you do the crime, you do the time. But apparently not if you are Mesa Police Lieutenant Rick Van Galder. He was caught driving drunk back in February. His blood alcohol level almost four times the legal limit. I didn't realize I've had a couple drinks. A Gilbert police officer's body camera captured Lieutenant Van Galder trying to use his position to get away with the crime. I have 20 years on the job. Time. I'm and time again. I literally have a thin blue line tattooed on my arm. I watched officers die. Gilbert police officers refused to grant him special treatment, but Scottsdale jail staff did. Van Galder was supposed to serve his three-day jail sentence, but it turned out to be more of a three-day staycation. Jail surveillance videos obtained by 12 News show him hanging out, shooting the breeze with detention officers. They even had food delivered. All of this courtesy of some of the Scottsdale jail staff. Our knee-jerk reaction was, there's no way this can be can be true. Were you blindsided by this incident? You know, I'll tell you, when you, when you first approached us with, um, with the information that you had at your disposal at the time, um, we, we were very surprised. Scottsdale Police Chief Alan Rod Bell didn't know Mesa Police Lieutenant Rick Van Galder received preferential treatment from his jail staff. Lieutenant Van Galder was supposed to pass into the obscurity of a jail cell in segregation, isolated in a cell because he's a cop, protected against vengeful inmates. The impression we had when we agreed to this arrangement was he was going to spend confinement for three days in our jail. But that's not what happened. Not entirely, anyway. It's August 4th. Van Galder surrenders to the Scottsdale City Jail. Detention officer John Gamble uses a handheld metal detector to check him for weapons and other contraband. Then Van Galder chats up a storm with detention officers and is led to his cell. Van Galder goes in at 5.45 that night. The next morning, Sergeant Vogel wakes him up. There's no audio, but you can clearly see Van Galder's got a big smile on his face. He just got a get-out-of-jail-free pass thanks to Sergeant Vogel. Who put Sergeant Vogel up to this? He's the one who took him out. It's a good question we're going to get answered. He's led through the door that says no prisoners beyond this point. It's a very concerning video because it screams all kinds of violations of policy and procedure. He was taken out of the secure area and taken into the detention manager's office, which is outside the secure area. Lieutenant Jeff Landrum is the detention manager, the head honcho of the jail. There are cameras there, but only surveillance. They're not recording. My understanding is he went into the lieutenant's office where he spent the remainder of his time. Where did Van Galder sleep? On a couch, a sofa? Is there a bathroom in that office? What's in that office? Well, I know there's no bathroom in that office. Now, he had some freedoms there, too, I understand. Van Galder magically reappears several hours later. At 11.51 a.m., Sergeant Chris Kylick comes through the door carrying Van Galder's lunch, fast food. Keep in mind, he's supposed to eat jail food. No mystery meat for this lieutenant. Yeah, I think he paid for it himself. And they went out and bought lunch and brought him back into the detention area and uh, shared lunch with him. Without a shadow of a doubt, jail staff was enamored with a lieutenant from a neighboring police department. 
At 2.36, Van Gogler surfaces again on the video. He exits through door number 10, and that's the last sighting of him on the video. Van Gogler seemingly had free reign, not even in the jail, let alone a cell where he was supposed to be. And he had a visitor. His wife got into the town entrance office and even brought lunch on two occasions. No visitors are allowed in this jail. His wife is Mesa Police Homicide Detective Teresa Van Galder. Does that make it even more egregious? I think she should know better, absolutely. Far from prying eyes, a prisoner holed up in an office with privileges galore. Even given a key card by another employee. But highly inappropriate and certainly not within our policies and practices and, and quite frankly very disappointing. So he could come and go as he pleased. And that gave him some opportunity to move around the building, exit the building freely, and that has me greatly concerned. Rod Bell also concedes he cannot account for all of Van Galder's whereabouts. Is there the possibility that he got in the car with his wife and went bar hopping Saturday night? He is in for a conviction of super extreme DUI. Uh, it, again, I can't account, but the investigation will account. An internal affairs investigation was launched almost immediately to find out who arranged the special accommodations for their guest. Within days, Lieutenant Jeff Landrum, Sergeant Don Vogel, Sergeant Chris Kylick were suspended. Who orchestrated this sham? At this point in the investigation, it's unclear. Or did they act on their own volition? The chief has a theory. I just think that they felt they had a law enforcement officer that was coming in to spend time and, and, and for whatever reason made decisions that weren't good decisions in terms of how he was going to be treated while he was here. Van Galder should have never been there to begin with. The Scottsdale City Jail's maximum hold time is 48 hours. Van Galder was sentenced to 72 hours in jail. But I actually made that mistake. Mistakes made. Accountability to come. Can you trust these employees? Should they ever be able to come back and run this jail under your watch? Because at the end of the day, you're responsible. These are questions I have to have answered. You're absolutely right. Why would veteran jail staff and the man in charge of the jail risk their careers and livelihoods for Rick Van Galder? Detention manager Jeff Landrum's been at the helm for nearly two decades. Sergeants Don Vogel and Chris Kylick have worked at the jail for more than 20 years. All three city employees combined make nearly $300,000. In fact, Chief Rod Bell signed off on pay raises for all three men on June 13th. Whether they get to keep their jobs is still being determined. Wendy Halloran, 12 News at 10. Yeah, I hope his wife is still not a homicide detective. I'm going to have to find that out because... That would not be right. Her investigating murders? Wouldn't surprise me. It's Mesa. Spitting Cobra. I'm out.